Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I want to talk about Bible tracks. Uh, more specifically, homemade Bible tracks. I hope that uh, some of you watching this video are busily passing out Bible tracks so people can learn uh, this good news about salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. The problem, though, with Bible tracts is that uh, it's really hard to find uh, mass-produced Bible tracts that really are telling the, the truth about salvation. Uh, it's sad, sad but true that uh, most of the Bible tracts are really uh, um, promoting a false message of salvation rather than uh, the simple message that salvation is a free gift you receive from Jesus Christ, it's eternal life in heaven, and it's free. Uh, nothing is required of you except putting your faith completely in Jesus for salvation. But most of the Bible tracts are not telling us that. Uh, most of the Bible tracts are adding other requirements uh, besides the simple fact that we need to put our faith completely in the Savior. So, uh, it's sad but true. Uh, it's hard to find a good Bible tract uh, if you want to pass them out. Uh, you certainly do want to pass them out if they're uh, promoting a false message of salvation. So, what are we to do? Uh, I've suggested to some of my friends recently that they make their own Bible tracts. And I said, well, here's a little project for you to do. Uh, make your own tract. And I would suggest you keep it very short and simple. See if you can't um, present the message with roughly maybe 10 verses from the Bible. Well, I thought since I've uh, asked some of my friends to do this, that it's only fair that I do it myself. So that's what I've done, and I'm going to present to you my version of uh, a Bible tract now, it's very easy once you choose your verses and to print them up on a regular 8.5 by 11 piece of paper and, and then pass them out. And to save space, what, what I suggest is that you make your tract so that you can put, put it on a plain piece of paper like this. And I've got the message on the top and I've got the same message on the bottom. And then all I need to do is cut it down the middle, and that would be the full tract. And then I would just fold it all up so that it's about this size, fold it up, and I just write on one side of it, good news. So the next thing to uh, discuss is the content of this Bible tract. What should be in it? Well, I'm going to uh, review the track that I just put together, and uh, maybe you'll want to use this exact track that I'm uh, going to explain now, or maybe you'll decide to make your own, choosing your own verses. But I do think that uh, you need to make sure that the verses you choose are presenting the message of salvation as simply uh, as possible. Uh, and the, the shorter, the better as long as uh, the basic information is, is covered. So let me go over the content of the track that I just put together. Um, at the top, there's simply a question. It says, do you think you are going to heaven? And then the follow-up question is, why? Uh, these are um, what I would call diagnostic questions. Uh, by asking these two questions, we can diagnose their condition. And if they tell us, uh, yes, I'm, I believe I'm going to go to heaven, and the, what, the reason I'm going is because uh, I'm trusting Jesus as my Savior. My faith is in Him. I'm relying on Him. Uh, then I would consider that a satisfactory answer to the question. But you're going to probably be surprised as you ask people these, these questions that more than likely 
the answers you'll hear is, well, uh, I'm not positive I'm going to heaven. I, I, I hope to go to heaven. And, and uh, the reason uh, is because I'm a good person and, you know, I follow the golden rule and I follow the Ten Commandments or I attend church or uh, I uh, confess to the, the priest and take communion or whatever it is. They, they, they may have a variety of answers as to why but you're going to find the vast majority of people are going to be answering that they're going to go to heaven because uh, they're good enough. Uh, they'll go to heaven because they performed well enough or because of personal merit. So in other words, they're putting their faith in themselves. They're putting their faith in their ability to um, be good enough to satisfy God. So uh, it's sad, but to almost everybody who asks these two questions to, that's the answer you'll get. So once you they answer the questions, then you say, well, let's see what the Bible says about this. Suppose the person told me that they're going to go to heaven because uh, they're, they're a good person and they're, you know, uh, and they hope they're good enough. Then I would say, well, let's look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 3. It says, for they don't understand that Christ has died to make them right with God. Instead, they are trying to make themselves good enough to gain God's favor by keeping the laws and customs. But that is not God's way of salvation. So this is the opening salvo. The, the first thing that we want to address is this false um, doctrine that they can somehow go to heaven if they're a good enough person. So in Romans 10 3 it says for they don't understand that Christ has died to make them right with God instead they are trying to make themselves good enough to gain God's favor by keeping the laws and customs but that is not God's way of salvation. Then the next and I would ask them once I think the best way to review verses with people is to uh, have them read the verse and then explain it to you. Tell, ask them to tell you what that verse means. And, and this is pretty darn simple. That doesn't require a lot of uh, you know, translation or interpretation. It just says what it says. And it says, no, that's not God's way to salvation it, by, by you being good enough. Uh, and then next we go to Ephesians. Uh, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And again, I would ask the person, could you explain the meaning of that verse? Uh, they... The important things in this verse is to understand what grace is, and that is that for it is by grace you've been saved. That means that God is gracious. God is giving us something, salvation, uh, even though we don't deserve it. Uh, so it's only because God is gracious that we can be saved. And we get this salvation through faith. Uh, our faith is what uh, is the means by which we receive salvation. Now, it says that uh, salvation, this is not from yourselves. That means salvation is not from yourselves. It's not based upon you. It's based upon God's graciousness and your faith in him. Uh, it says it is the gift of God. So it's an important thing to understand that that uh, salvation is a gift. Uh, a gift is something that's uh, given to someone freely. You don't have to work to earn a gift. Uh, you don't have to uh, pay a person back after they give you the gift. You simply receive the gift and it's free. Uh, so salvation is a gift and it says it's not by works. You don't get salvation by doing good works by attending church, 
by going to confession or communion, by giving money to charity. There's no good works you can do because salvation is a free gift and you don't get it because you've worked for it or earned it. And, and then it says finally, so that no one can boast. No one has the right to boast that they earned heaven because it's not by our works, it's by faith and it's a gift. And then I would ask them to uh, look at Romans 3.23. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if, you need to understand that uh, if you think that you're able to uh, get to heaven because you're good enough, you have to understand that you're not good enough. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, the glory of God is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the measuring stick. Uh, if you wanted to go to heaven because you're good enough, you would have to be as good as Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is perfect. He's never sinned. And he is God himself. So you'd have to be a, a sinless God uh, in order to uh, meet the standard that God requires if you wanted to earn your way to heaven. Uh, and then it says, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the important thing here is, in Romans 3.23, it established that we have all sinned and we all come short. Uh, that means everyone. There's no exceptions. Uh, no one can uh, satisfy the requirements of uh, God has for heaven, which is perfection, and we all come short of this standard. Uh, it says, because of sin, the wages of sin is death. So we will all die. We will not have eternal life. We will all die because of sin. But the gift of God is eternal life. God has a gift for each one of us. The gift is eternal life rather than death. You can receive eternal life as a free gift, and you receive this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ is the one that has the gift of eternal life, and he has it, and he's offering it, and he'll give it to everyone freely if they'll come to him to get it. Uh, so now we've covered so far that uh, uh, don't think that you can go to heaven because of uh, your own performance because of your own personal merit. That's not God's way of salvation. And the reason that won't work is because uh, we all fall short. No one uh, can reach the standard of perfection. That's why we all need to receive this gift of eternal life. Uh, then it says in John one twenty nine, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And in parentheses, I put this, the Lamb of God is Jesus. So, uh, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see, the wages of, it said previously, the wages of sin is death. So, something had to do be done about this sin problem. But because we all sin, we will all die, we will not have eternal life. So what's to be done about that? Uh, it says, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ, he is the Lamb of God. That means that he is the sacrificial lamb. When he was nailed on that cross and he died, that was the payment for all of our sins. That's why he's called the Lamb of God. He was the sacrificial lamb that paid for our sins. Um, and then this, we asked him to look at Mark 10, 45, and it says, uh, Jesus came to give his life a ransom for many. So in other words, Jesus is this sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God, and he, the reason he came to this world, he came down from heaven and he became a man, uh, and, and the reason he did that was so that he could give his life as a ransom. Now, what is a ransom? 
A ransom is simply a payment made to set someone free. Uh, if you were uh, being held, kidnapped and held for ransom, uh, someone would have to pay the ransom fee uh, in order for you to gain your freedom. Well, Jesus said he came to give his life as a ransom for us. So that's what he did. He died on the cross and his death served as a payment, the ransom, to set us free from this judgment of death. Then we look at maybe the most famous verse in the Bible. It says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So in this verse we learn about the love of God. God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten Son. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. And because he's God's only begotten Son, he is God in the flesh. He is God who became a man as the Son of God. And uh, he is fully God, but he became a man so that he could die for our sins. And that's what he did. And then it says, whoever believes in him, whoever believes in Jesus should not perish. In other words, you're not going to perish, you're not going to suffer death and the second death in the lake of fire and perish. Instead, you will have everlasting life because you believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life. So in John 3.16, we learn that God loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who is God, um, who became a man. He, he sent his son so he could die for our sins and therefore we don't have to perish. Instead, we can have life everlasting because we put our faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, next we look at John 14, 6. And it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here we learn three important facts about Jesus Christ and also the fact that he is the exclusive way to have eternal life. Uh, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Jesus Christ is the only way to have eternal life. Uh, you, you don't receive eternal life through Muhammad or Buddha uh, or the Pope or the Virgin Mary. And you certainly don't receive eternal life through your own merit. No, Jesus said he is the way. He's the way to receive eternal life. When you put your faith in him, you receive the gift of eternal life. Jesus says that he is the truth. He is the truth that you must believe. The one thing that you've got to get right in this life. You can be wrong about everything in your life, but there's one thing you must get right. The truth is that Jesus Christ is the way to receive eternal life, the only way. Uh, I, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way to receive life everlasting. And he says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That means that Jesus is the exclusive way. So you have to reject all other ways and, and uh, also reject the, uh, yourself as a way. Uh, understand that you cannot put your faith in yourself. Instead, put your faith in Jesus, who is the only way to receive eternal life. And that's the truth you must understand and believe. And then we look at Acts 16, verses 13, 30 and 31. The question is asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Here is the, uh, the big question that uh, everybody needs to answer, and you need to answer this one question correctly, and that is, what must I do to be saved? Saved means uh, there's uh, some 
dire consequences that you're in your future and you need to be saved from it. The, 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 the fate that you need to be saved from is the fact that because of sin you'll die, uh, uh, you'll be found guilty at the judgment and, and you will be uh, put into the lake of fire where you suffer the second death and you perish. This is what needs to be avoided. This is what you need to be saved from. So what must I do to be saved? Well, the answer is very simple. Uh, you don't need a, a, an entire book to be written about it. Uh, you don't need a, you know, a thesis. You don't need even a long explanation. You simply need a one sentence statement. And that is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you depend on Jesus for your salvation. You rely completely on Jesus and no other way. You reject any other way and instead you're depending completely on Jesus. No one else, nothing else except Jesus. Then we look at uh, John 11 verses 25 and 26. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So here we have Jesus stating that he is the resurrection and the life. Uh, Jesus raised himself from the dead after they nailed him to the cross, after he died and he was buried, he raised himself from the dead on the third day, proving that he has the power of life and death, proving that he is God himself. And he not only raised himself from the dead, but he will raise you from the dead and give you life everlasting if you put your faith in him. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He will raise you and give you life everlasting. He says, he that believeth in me, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in his ability to give you life everlasting? Do you believe in his faithfulness to keep this promise that he will give you eternal life? He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Even after you die, Jesus says you will live again. He will resurrect you and give you eternal life if you simply put your faith in him. He says, whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall never die. Then he asked the question, believest thou this? This is the question Jesus asks. And, and this is the question you must answer if you want to have eternal life. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, that Jesus has the power to raise you from the dead and give you eternal life. Do you believe that? If you do, then he will keep his promise to you. Then we look at John 10, 28. It says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. <laughs> Such wonderful promises here from Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I give unto them eternal life. When you put your faith in Jesus, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, when you answer his question, believest thou this, that he is the resurrection and the life, he gives you eternal life if you put your faith in him. And he says, you shall never perish. You'll never die again. You'll never suffer uh, the second death and the lake of fire. No, you have eternal life and you will never perish. This is a promise from Jesus Christ. And he, then he finally, he says the, the most important promise of all, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. In other words, Jesus says he has you in the palm of his hand and no one can pluck you out. Once you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, and he gives you eternal life, 
Nothing can ever change that. Isn't that wonderful? This is what we call eternal security. You can have uh, security. You can be secure in this knowledge. You can rest and be sure that Jesus promised you eternal life and he is able to give it to you and he is faithful to give it to you. It's a promise from the Son of God. So rest assured that you will never lose your salvation since you put your faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ. So these are the verses I chose. I believe if a person simply reads this, uh, they will probably understand it without any explanation. Uh, it, it covers who Jesus is, the Son of God, this, uh, the sole source of eternal life, this, the Savior, the only Savior. It tells, it tells us what he did. He died for our sins, and he's raised from the dead. Uh, it tells us how to be saved, and it tells us that we will never lose our salvation. So, uh, this is a tract that tells you the true message of our salvation. Now, if you want to make your own tract and you want to come up with some other scripture that uh, covers these same points, then uh, that would be fine too. Feel free to use uh, the, the tract as I've composed it here, if you like. So you can, you can print them up, then you just cut them in half and fold them up and you pass them out to your friends and family or anybody who will receive it. I think, uh, you know, I don't know how much it actually will cost to make one copy, but uh, you get uh, two tracks on each eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So it'll be very, very inexpensive to do this and instead of getting tracks from, uh, you know, companies that mass produce them and are printing and promoting a false message of salvation, a message that you get saved by repenting of your sins or, or surrendering your life or, or uh, you know, picking up your cross and following Jesus, becoming a servant of Jesus. Uh, it, it, those are, that's the message you find on most tracks. So... If you're going to use a published tract and scrutinize it very carefully, make sure that the content uh, of that message is the same as the content of the message I just reviewed with you now. So uh, if uh, you do come up with your own version of this tract, then uh, um, send me a copy of it. I'd like to see what you came up with. And uh, if you decide you want to use this one, feel free to do it. And I hope that this not only tells you how to make your own tracks, but the content that should be in a tract. Uh, and now the only thing that's left is get busy doing it. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.